Last week, our scripture lesson came from the Gospel of Mark uh, in chapter 10. It was uh, James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were, were asking Jesus if they might sit on his right and left hand in glory. And our reading today follows that story immediately. Mark chapter 10 will begin at verse 46 and read through 52. Hear the word of our Lord. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he only shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. And the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight, and he followed Jesus along the road. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's story from Mark's Gospel presents us with the healing of a man called Bartimaeus. Bar literally means son of so Bar Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, it's a miraculous healing story. Now typically, healing stories in the Gospels follow sort of a familiar pattern. Usually the story begins with a description of the predicament of the one who is to be healed. They're lame, they're blind, whatever. Uh, this is followed by Jesus' actions and words transforming the person's disabled body into a fully functioning body. 
Often these stories conclude with a little remark from Jesus about the nature of discipleship. Uh, go and sin no more, or don't tell anybody who did this. And then, and then the person who is healed will often say something about Jesus' power or Jesus' divinity. Well, in today's healing story, Jesus is leaving Jericho with a group of people accompanying him. Everyone else is walking along the way, walking along the road in stark contrast to Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus is a blind man and he is sitting alongside the road, not walking with the crowd. The description of Bartimaeus is straightforward. He's unable to see. So we know from that, given uh, the kind of society that he lived in, that he will only be able to support himself by listening for those who pass by and begging them for money. Bartimaeus represents the most vulnerable in society, the poorest of the poor. Mark doesn't present us with many details, but we immediately realize that Bartimaeus is a person who's living literally on the edge, on the outside. He is outside of the city limits, He's on the edge of the footpath. He doesn't, can't sit in the road and walk right in the road. He would not be able to see people whom he would run into. He's outside of the light. He's outside even of the everyday economy, which ordinarily produces goods and services. Like many others who receive healing at Jesus' hands, Bartimaeus has been excluded by the people who live around him. There's no way that he could be a responsible head of household, right? There's, there's no way that he can provide for himself, much less provide for dependents or a family. It's, it's different in our world today. There, uh, there are accommodations and, and plenty of livelihoods and ways for someone who is blind to make a living, but in Jesus' day, that was much more difficult. Bartimaeus would not even have been able to fulfill the typical expected obligations of participating in civic or religious life. So the narrative here, the story that Mark tells, builds some tension between the crowd and Bartimaeus. We understand their differences. Bartimaeus hears that it's Jesus of Nazareth coming down the road, and he starts to cry out to Jesus. The crowd tells the man what? The crowd tells Bartimaeus what? Shush, <laughs> be quiet, because beggars are supposed to know their proper place in society, which evidently is to wait quietly and unobtrusively along the side of the road to wait upon the generosity of the able-bodied. Evidently, that's the expectation. But the crowd, in all their, uh, in all their talking and uh, telling Bartimaeus to hush, it only causes him to renew his proclamation of Jesus as the son of David. He cries out, son of David, have mercy on me. The crowd tells him, be quiet, be quiet, don't bother Jesus. And he calls out all the louder. So Bartimaeus declares his faith in Jesus by calling him the son of David. He declares his faith in Jesus even before Jesus heals him. So Jesus' final words function as an approval of the blind man's confession. So Bartimaeus calls him son of David. Jesus heals him and says, your faith has healed you. Now, this is kind of an unusual story in Mark's gospel because very often in Mark's gospel, the followers of Jesus don't understand who he is or what he's all about, right? The disciples are quite clueless actually through Mark's entire gospel. So we can't help but notice that Bartimaeus, who is supposed to be sort of an, who is sort of an outcast here, Bartimaeus is the one who recognizes Jesus. He calls Jesus by name, labeling him with the impressive title, Son of David, 
without ever having met Jesus. In fact, he not only calls out to Jesus, he creates a ruckus. Those who surround him try to shush him up, but he will have none of it. He demands mercy. Previously in Mark's gospel, let's get a contrast here. Previously in Mark's gospel, we heard the story of the rich young man, remember, who wanted eternal life, and he says to Jesus, what do I have to do to get eternal life? And James and John, in the story just before this one in today's gospel, um, James and John wanted glory in Jesus' kingdom. But this guy, this blind guy sitting along the side of the road, wants only mercy. He doesn't even specify the nature of that mercy until Jesus puts the question to him and says, what is it you want? And he says, teacher, I want to see. When Jesus responds to Bartimaeus' call for mercy, uh, the crowd tries to shush him, and Jesus says, no, no, call him, call him to me. So the crowd quickly changes from denying the voice of this man to encouragement, saying, oh, right, 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 of course, of course. Take heart. Jesus will see you now, right? He's calling out to you. So Bartimaeus tosses his cloak aside and jumps up and runs to Jesus. Now, I love this. Bartimaeus might be blind, but he's not lame, right? He can walk, he can move. So our text tells us he sprang up. He didn't get up cautiously. He didn't slowly come to his knees and do the 50-year-old, you know, try to get up off of the floor when, when you've been sitting down there. On receiving his sight, I mean, he jumps and springs up and goes immediately to Jesus. And on receiving his sight, he learns that his faith has made him well. Jesus only says that to one other person that he heals in Mark's gospel. The woman, the woman whom he healed from the flow of blood. She too was distinguished by her unrelenting insistence on contact with Jesus when he passed by in the midst of a crowd. And now with his sight restored, Bartimaeus does not just go on about his way as Jesus had instructed him to do, but instead, he followed Jesus along the way. Did you catch that in the story? Jesus says, you're well. Your faith has healed you. Go on about your way. And Bartimaeus, of his own accord, his own choice, chooses to follow Jesus. Here in this story of Bartimaeus, we encounter what at first might seem like an insignificant detail. After his sight is restored, Bartimaeus follows Jesus, but he leaves something behind. His cloak. Already in Mark's gospel, we've heard the story of the rich young man who walks away sad because Jesus suggested that a wealthy person could not become a proper disciple. Somebody who was hanging on to his money couldn't follow him. Jesus had urged that rich young man to sell all that he had and to follow him. Can you see the contrast here? The rich young man could not bear to give up his many possessions to follow Jesus. But this poor, formerly blind man instantly walks away from his only source of security, his cloak, in order to follow Jesus. Jesus didn't even have to say, this you must, you know, come and follow me. He came of his own accord. The cloak here is not just a simple piece of clothing. For people living in abject poverty, the cloak provides warmth in cold or wet conditions. It provides also protection from the brutal daytime sun. It would give a bit of protection and privacy when sleeping at night. Or it could even be thrown in front of a person like a rug in order to collect money. In discarding his cloak, in leaving that behind, Bartimaeus leaves behind the only thing of value that he owns so that his movement toward Jesus will be completely unhindered. The little that he has 
he leaves behind so that he might focus solely on following Jesus. So Bartimaeus appears to have become a wholehearted and immediate and unashamed follower of Jesus. Like those first disciples who left families and fishing boats and nets behind to follow Jesus, he has also walked away from his only valuable belonging, his only source of income and sustenance. We should note the differences from the opening of this passage to its conclusion. The miracle begins with Bartimaeus sitting on the side of the road sitting still, and it ends with this new disciple walking, following Jesus. This is an important piece for us to note because it reminds us that the point of this whole story moves beyond simply the physical healing that takes place. There's more than physical healing happening here. It's not enough for Bartimaeus to simply have his eyesight back. In order to experience real healing, complete healing, he needs to be moving forward in a new direction in his life. For Bartimaeus and for us, what's most important in this life is our spiritual health, our spiritual well-being. What good does it do us, after all, to be physically health healthy and strong if our souls, our very souls, are disabled. Again, let's look at the differences between Bartimaeus and the rich young man who walked away from Jesus with a sad heart. <coughs> Pardon me. The rich young man had wealth enough to sustain himself without worry. He could sustain himself without worry for the duration of his life. He was that wealthy. And as far as we know, he was phys physically healthy as well. But that rich young man was spiritually unwell. He was spiritually crippled. So he walked away from Jesus with sadness in his heart. In clinging to his physical security, his physical safety, he lost his way spiritually. Bartimaeus, on the other hand, recognized the amazing gift of being able to follow Jesus. Bartimaeus shows us what it truly means to be able to see. Ironically, the one who was physically blind could see Jesus all along, couldn't he? He couldn't see Jesus, but he knew who he was, calling him son of David. The more clearly we see Jesus, the more we recognize who he is and how he changes our lives and changes our world, the more ready we will be to leave behind even those things that are most precious to us so that we can simply rise up and follow him. May it be so for you and for me. Amen.
stand for the benediction. Beloved of God, you are chosen, adopted into God's family, joint heirs with Christ of the kingdom of God. So go this day, following him with joy, with energy, enthusiasm, and great love, sharing the story of what he has done for you. You are blessed to be a blessing. Amen. <laughs>